This is the farmhouse where I grew up, where my father grew up, where my grandfather grew up, where my great-grandfather grew up. The main house was built in 1860. We got electricity in 1943 with the Rural Electrification Act. And now what I am doing is I'm removing the majority of the 1960 updates and reverting the era back to somewhere between 1920 and 1950. I'm going to show you each room in the order that I did them years ago. While I am no more of a carpenter or a designer than any member of my family has ever been, I'm doing it to suit me and my tastes. This bathroom rebuild is going to include a built-in linen closet and something you never see in a bathroom, which is a broom closet. Now to start the linen closet rebuild, we've got to go back to when we put the tub surround in. Now if you notice on the right hand side between the tub surround and the wall, there is a space. Now initially that space was for plumbing access to put the plumbing in. However, if you put a tape measure on it, or the front of the blue to the wall, you've got 10 inches. Now, I believe that there was enough room to put a 10-inch linen closet from the floor to the ceiling. However, everybody that looked at it said, no, it couldn't be done. It was going to be too small. You couldn't put anything in it. Well, we'll see about that. So, as we showed in an earlier chapter, we've got that wall covered in that white paint. And we've got it boxed on the right-hand side around the old heat run. And so between the tub surround and that first 2x4 on the right, we built a simple door, which was nothing more than the beadboard that we were using on the wall and 1x4 boards that were pocket screwed together. And then the first time that we swung the door around to the tub, we found that it couldn't hit the tub so that it would be fully open at 90 degrees because of the shower track on the ceiling, as you see. So, door had to come off, and we cut a little bit of the frame away so that it would clear the track and give us 90 degrees of opening of the door. And with that cutout, you now see that when we open that linen closet door, it will swing all the way to the tub, and we have full access. Here's another angle of that door. You can see that when the door is partially open that we put another piece of the wall board to close off the area where the plumbing was. So we have a nice enclosed area for the linen closet. And our next step was to paint the door the color of the wall and then the trim we painted it with an, an epoxy white to match the trim in the bathroom. And then on the right hand side which is going to be the broom closet, we built another door identical to the first. And with the broom closet door open fully at 90 degrees, it hits the header above where the door is going to be. And this is what you would see inside. And that door was painted the blue of the wall, but not trimmed to kind of hide the fact that there is a door there. And with the door painted, Inside now, this is what we had. The linen closet and broom closet are now ready to be filled. Initially, I ordered five 9-inch deep freedom rails from organizeit.com, and we put them up, as you can see. However, we quickly realized that we should have ordered more so that we could go all the way to the ceiling, so we'd have floor-to-ceiling storage. These 9-inch deep shelves are custom-cut, to your specifications for width. So all you have to do is just drop them onto the supports on the wall. As far as I can tell, they're the only company that does make a nine inch depth shelf, which because our space was only 10, we had to have these. Now over on the broom closet side, I just went to Home Depot and bought one shelf. And then with a hacksaw, I cut it down to fit and then took their little uh, white plastic caps and put over the ends and then bought their standard 
wall mount supports and just drop the shelves on. And then just below those two shelves, you see a plastic corner support that holds the broom because the walls are quite thin. I just siliconed it using the same silicone that we used to build the tub knee wall, just siliconed it to the wall. And the next day that was solid. And as you can see, it holds the broom just fine. Now with both of the doors closed, and if you look at the ceiling, you notice that we had a problem. The doors are level. The ceiling is not. Now we did not touch the ceiling other than refinish it. So you can see it's not perfectly flat. So we were going to have to address that little oops. So the fix that we came up with was to take a piece of the trim and put it just above the door to cover that gap. It's there. You're still going to see that it, it's not perfectly flat, but it's not quite as obvious as it was. And that was short of redoing the ceiling, which we did not want to do. This was the best we could come up with. And as you can see, it is an improvement over what we had. And when the extra shelves came in from organizeit.com, we installed them. So now we have seven metal shelves and the wooden bottom shelf that sits on the floor. And as you can see, we put all the stuff that we needed in there and we still have more room. So naysayers who was telling me that that linen closet was not deep enough and you couldn't hold anything in there, I proved you wrong. And that is how we took 10 inches of useless space in the bathroom and turned it into a floor to ceiling linen closet and something you do not see in a bathroom, a broom closet for our 1950s bathroom renovation.